We should all aspire to be and hire the baker who finds romance in a loaf of bread. Hi everyone, David G, speaker, storyteller, and author of the Three Second Selling Platform here. I was recently talking about the years that I spent as an entertainment reporter with an acquaintance of mine who happens to be an executive at an executive search firm. So he asked me who my favorite interview subject was, and when I told him who and why, I realized the answer might be worth sharing with a little wider audience. First, a little background. So when I was an entertainment reporter for 24-hour nationwide news network, I did the Hollywood press junket for the very critically acclaimed movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross. You might know it. The film features a stellar cast, including uh, Alan Arkin, Alec Baldwin, Al Pacino, who was nominated for both an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor, Ed Harris, Kevin Spacey, and two-time Oscar winner Jack Lemmon in the role of Shelley the Machine Levine. It depicts a couple of days in the lives of four salesmen who are peddling bogus real estate uh, land in Florida, their office manager and Kevin Spacey, and a guy who was sent by corporate to quote unquote motivate them. That guy, Alec Baldwin of Always Be Closing fame, you might know that, announces this month's sales contest. First prize, a brand new Cadillac Eldorado. Second prize, a set of steak knives. Third prize, you're all fired. So Lemon by this time had made over 50 films and was about 67, 68 years old. And for sure he didn't, certainly didn't need to be there during, uh, you know, doing a junket and on a film set. In fact, at the time, several of the journalists doing the junket wondering if this might even be Lemon's last film. As it turned out, he went on to make 13 more, including a couple of grumpy old men movies with his best friend, Walter Matthau. Anyway, I didn't ask him in our interview if he still enjoyed making movies since I assumed the answer was yes. Instead, I asked him if he was surprised he still was. A little parsing there. He said, yes, and I'm damn glad about it because I'd love it. The Lemon was totally old school about this. He recognized the value of good publicity and worked really hard during those five minutes that we had together. He even went so far as to finish telling me a story even after our allotted time had elapsed and the cameras were turned off and the guy giving us the time cue was going like this. That was just the type of person he was. Anyway, I followed up with, I think of all the things that you could be doing right now, playing golf, traveling, hanging out with grandkids, friends and family, and so on. You don't really need to be on a film set and you don't need to be here plugging it. His reply, yeah, that's, I do all those things. But the reason I'm here is because I'm still finding romance in a loaf of bread. Then he proceeded to tell me a great story, one that I think will resonate with you. Let me tell you about my old man, Lemon said to me, leaning forward in his chair. I looked up to him and for good reason. He was a great guy and he was a baker by trade and every morning he would leave the house at 4 a.m. to go to work. Now, as I grew up, this is Lemon talking, we were quite comfortable and he could have stopped working at any time. And so I asked him why he still did it, why he left that house so early and still worked so hard. And he said he did it because he loved it. And he said he would keep doing it as long as he continued to find romance in a loaf of bread. He kept, kept on happily working right to the end of his life. And that's why I'm here making movies, because I love it and I want to do it until the end of my life, Lord willing. And he did. To say his father was the baker, though, was kind of stretching the truth a little bit, at least not the kind who might come to mind, uh, busily stooped over an oven or a cutting board. His father was John Uller Lemon Jr., the general sales manager, vice president, and later president of the Donut Corporation of America. D uh, Jack Lemon grew up in, in Tony Evanston, Illinois, an affluent suburb of Chicago, was sent to the Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. And though Though he wanted to study drama at Yale, his father persuaded him to take business classes at Harvard University. So, yes, I guess Jack Lemon's dad may have been a baker of sorts, and maybe in the early days he actually was one, but certainly Jack lived a life of relative affluence. However, I don't think it really changes the story, does it? Maybe the best part of the story, that Jack and his dad truly did not have to work as hard as they did especially later in life, yet they did simply because they found 
romance in that loaf of bread. They found romance in their vocational endeavors and they did it even if they didn't have to. Tell you another story. In 2009, an Australian nurse and counselor wrote an online article. Uh, it's called Regrets of the Dying. You might know that as well. About her time working with people in their last weeks, last days, last minutes of their lives. And specifically, what these people, what these patients wished they had done differently in their lives now that they were at the end. The piece generated millions of views worldwide and requests poured in for more about how to apply the wisdom that she had learned, the things that she had listened to. This eventually gave way to a best-selling memoir, which had sold over a million copies and has now been translated into 32 languages. Now, of all the responses that she says she received from her patients, this one was the most common. Quote, I'd wished I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. When people realize that their life is almost over and they look back clearly on it, it's easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled, she writes. Most people had not even honored a half of their dreams and had to not die knowing that it was due to their choices they had made or not made. When people realize their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it's really easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. And that is what is so cool about Jack Lemmon and his dad in his memorable 51-year-old, 51-year uh, Hollywood career, as well as the relationship that he had with his dad and, and with the movies. Both Jack Lemmon and, and his dad pursued their dreams, doing what they wanted, what they loved, and finding success and satisfaction and romance on their own terms, finding their own loaves of bread right to the end of their lives. Two people lucky enough to love working at their jobs long after they didn't have to do it. We should all be so lucky, right? Well, we can be. As I told my executive recruiter friend about Jack Lemmon and his dad, I said, these are the kinds of people you should be looking to hire. They are the kinds of people we should want to work with and the kind of people we should be ourselves. I'll end with a quote from Jack Lemmon. Success is always somebody else's opinion of you, said Lemmon, but it doesn't amount to a darn compared to your own opinion of yourself. I'm David G, speaker, storyteller, author of the Three Second Selling Platform, and I am always making my three seconds count. Because when you master the art of three second selling, anything is possible.